Welcome to the part two of our gut race tutorial. Uh, this is a modeling part. As I said, uh, it's not really related to Corona, but um, I've included it because uh, I wanted this to be a complete tutorial of a project from start to finish. So maybe you can pick up a few tricks here and there uh, of my modeling process if you if you manage to catch any in such a speed. Uh, it's, it's about two hours of modeling compressed in 10 minutes, so it's about 12 times sped up. Uh, as you can see, I'm just using basic polygon modeling techniques. Uh, I'm not really too much concerned about uh, topology because it's going to be static asset. It's not going to be deformed in any way. So uh, I just do a simple, quick and dirty modeling. Here I'm using just a simple spline that I will then extrude and do boolean. As I said, really, really just uh, fastest way to do it. Uh, not concerned about geometry. Uh, I've I found a nice uh, reference image of a medieval interior, so that's what I got opened on the second monitor, which you can not, cannot see, but uh, I'm looking at it the entire time, and uh, I've in, in the identified some of the window features that are quite repetitive, so I decided to model just uh, one window arc with arch uh, with architectural features around it, and then I will use symmetry to distribute that around. Um, yep, so uh, this is this is just one one part of the uh, of the window block, and uh, then I will be distributing that around. What helped me what helped me a lot uh, to improve my modeling efficiency is that I've dedicated uh, one entire day on building uh, my own 3ds max uh, shortcut map from scratch i basi i basically deleted every single shortcut and i've i've assigned uh, my own shortcut to every single thing not only uh, modeling wise but in their entire software uh, it took some to uh, it took some time to getting used to but uh, it really paid off in the long run because uh, now i've got uh, every single thing I use mapped at some shortcut and uh, I don't need to go uh, and mess with user interface that often as I did previously. Uh, all right, so as you can see, I've here used the, used the symmetry to distribute, distribute the windows around. So now, now I've got already significant part of uh, of the interior done. Uh, I've identified also some nice like uh, dome, dome features, dome ceiling uh, on the reference images. So that's that's what I'm trying to do now. Uh, just just messing with the geometry. Uh, usually, it's uh, symmetry modifier is a great great uh, tool to uh, multiply some details quickly. So you can just start with a really basic shape and uh, in a matter of minutes you can you can use it to multiply the basic shape into something uh, that looks really complex. It's not really uh, this particular case, but uh, in general it's 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 really really useful tool. I think it's quite underrated. Another another good workflow is whenever I need to do uh, features that follow certain uh, certain topological features, then uh, I just extract the spline, extract the edge edge loop into a spline, and then extrude it, uh, or uh, use uh, the renderable spline feature to create ge geometry of it. So uh, this column I'm modeling right now, that's uh, that's another feature that I've identified on the reference image. So it's really helpful to always have something to look at uh, while while you're modeling. Uh, you can miss, you can see me. I I rarely go uh, and touch uh, the command panel or something like that. Of course, you can see me uh, sometimes going to like preferences or uh, configuring of the button sets because uh, I've I've encountered a bug where 3ds Max would randomly reset uh, the settings. So uh, the Max I'm working right now is not yet fully configured. So that's why I often have to mess with render settings. Hopefully not that often. Here I'm using some useful tools uh, from the ribbon uh, to generate random topology to create something like floor planks, uh, which I then extrude. And I always, when it's something like rustic, like this interior, something used, I always add a tiny amount of noise to, uh, to make things not so even. Here I'm using the same ribbon tool to generate topology to create some like 
uh, flat stones or like stone tiles that uh, that will be in a corner of the room around the window then add subdivide modifier relax it a little bit add a little bit of noise and we got these nice stone tiles then i've uh, i've also identified some of the bricks that are under the windows and there were really, really obvious features so i wanted them in the scene as well so uh, that's what i do did uh, using the same workflow subdivide modifier relax and a little bit of noise here i subdivided the entire room and now i'm adding some sort of uh, damage to the walls so uh, they don't seem like pristine and clean. I'm using freeform tools on the ribbon to, to sculpt it around a little bit. Uh, it's kind of fun, a uh, fun relaxing way to, to add some detail. You can, it's, it's, it's freeform basically, you don't need to care much about any precision. Um, now I'm modeling uh, the shell of the, of the entire interior. Uh, this is kind of what I was used to doing in mental ray where there were photons which caused leaks and I still use it in Corona because uh, Corona sometimes does in self-intersection artifacts like little bright dots in the corners so this will help to avoid it. Uh, you don't need to care about topology much, just, just something quick and dirty because uh, that's all you really need. Next thing is just uh, this little wall torch detail that I liked again using splines, uh, setting them to renderable to, to speed up speed up things. And again, rarely touching command panel and everything is mapped to hotkeys, so you're not really distracted from the, from the work you're doing. Uh, I'm measuring it quickly, I'm putting in some boxes to, to see the average scale of the person, to see where the torches would be scaled. Here I'm just quickly adding some fixture, so the torch is attached to the wall, some bolts. Okay, another torch, duplicated them, uh, looking for something I would add to the room. And then I found this nice, nice picture of some medieval table, so that's what I decided to do. I'm first building some curve profile, then, uh, which I will then extrude, so, so it goes quickly. Just, just adding some detail. Uh, adding some like some features on the on the bottom so it looks a little more fancy. Uh, symmetry again to duplicate it. Table uh, tabletop again subdivision noise. Adding some uh, edge loops and then extruding them inside to 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 create really separated planks which you can obviously see they are they are in there. It's better than using just a texture which which don't which doesn't give you those those deep uh, plastic artifacts. Just placing the table to, to see how it looks. Another reference that I found was this little medieval stool. Uh, so we have something to sit on uh, next to the table. So again, quick process, no hassle. And it's, it's just nice and relaxed when you do like uh, par partially freeform modeling that you don't care about the exact proportions too much and then you can be quite efficient. It's more like a 3D concept art than a precision 3D modeling. Again, you can see I'm just creating random spheres. I don't care really where they are placed or uh, if they are all of the same size. Here, just some medieval jug. Again, I found on the Google images. So this was a really quick one, some extrusion, uh, doing some handle against spline, just just set renderable and uh, collapsed a little poly modified a little bit. And uh, that's that's almost all. Next thing I did uh, was just a plane, displaced, uh, subdivided and displaced with the gradient, four corner gradient, so it's, it's it erases in the corners that's mapped with some uh, texture of the dirt so I wanted some like plastic dirt in the corners then I used a uh, freeform brush in a pol in a graphite tools and that's all